My 9.7 liter SM550 has seen various configurations in the past. And uh, recently I rebuilt this one up and thought to experiment with the cooler a little bit. So let's take a quick look at the updates and how it works today. Welcome to Machines and More. The Slager SM550 is a sub 10 liter premium sandwich style case. It does have pretty limiting air cooler clearance and I optioned it initially with the solid panels because I wanted to make it work with a passive setup. But I've heard it always works well with an Acetec 92 millimeter AIO. However, I've just air cooled this one for the simplicity. And so it's gone through different iterations like having that fanless Be Quiet Shadow Rock LP, the Noctua L9A, and on the GPU side, it's been through the RX 580, and then it had the reference RX 5700 with the blower cooler, but with the rebuild today, I thought I would try out the 6600 XT in it and also switch the cooler. So previously I ran the Ryzen 2600 in this case with the L9A and it was just okay. Definitely did a lot better with an undervolt, however, but I did want to step that CPU up to the 3600 today. Now this is a decisively medium powered build as you can tell from the specs. With the Ryzen 5 3600 plus the 6600 XT, it's still going to be plenty powerful without the heavy power draw. But in sub 10 liters, I think it'll still be an interesting challenge thermally. This case is fairly simple. With sub 10 liters, you basically get a pair of case fans at best. And instead of the NFA 12 by 25s that I usually ran in here, today I thought I'd check out the Arctic P12 ARGBs in here. It's kind of vain, but I wanted a black fan that still had decent performance. For the cooler, I did want to try the ID Cooling IS60 Evo, but with the 120 millimeter fan removed. Now that makes it just enough to clear the side, but uh, has that fan underneath so it can still have airflow. But to complete Dr. Frankenstein's air cooler, I also swapped out the stock fan to the one on the Noctua L9A, which is the NFA 9x15. Previously, when I checked out this cooler, I was pretty impressed by it, but it didn't have a backplate. And now I realize ID Cooling sent me a backplate for it when they sent by the 904 XT for testing. So a big thanks to them for doing that, and we'll install it today with the backplate. But you do have to put the cooler on first for this build, since the back isn't easily accessible, and you do have to screw the cooler in from underneath, but that's okay, it's not very bulky. So I cleaned up the case a little bit, put the fans in, the top and front panels come off to make building in this pretty easy. So put the ASUS B450i motherboard in, I did the cable management and then put the power supply in, which for this level of power, the SF450 from Corsair is perfectly sufficient. There's not too many cables involved with this build and with that M.2 drive, I don't need a SATA power cable, so that's nice. Being a sandwich style case, the riser cable is what allows the graphics card to be mounted on the other side, and this case takes strictly two slot cards. And that's what's so great about the 6600 XT, since it doesn't need a huge cooler and two slots is perfectly sufficient. I am going to run my Nitro Plus 6600 XT in here, but for the heck of it, this one is the pulse review sample. And I thought I'd throw it in and check it out in the build before it goes back. So that's put in place. Just one eight pin power cables needed. And the rest is just closing up the panels. After getting it all set up and getting all the drivers updated, I didn't have a huge amount of time with it just yet, but some of you know, stock voltages run a bit hot with this CPU. The GPU temps were absolutely great for being up against the solid panel, but man, those CPU temps are completely off. I expected it to be iffy because even though 
this heat sink is a good size. It only has a few millimeters of airspace between the side panel and the cooler. And given that the heat fins have to run horizontally, with this AM4 install. That's not like the case fans are able to help it cool semi-passively either. So at the fan curve I set and these temps, the fan is running at full speed and still it can't keep the temps down. Granted, it was running okay in the game, but it's just too hot for my preference, especially when it's not at full utilization. A 25 millivolt undervolt helps, but that's just throwing away performance. Here it's running re relatively cool at 100% load, but if you do this, make sure you check out the clocks because now it was only 3200 megahertz on all cores and that's just silly. By far the best way to make it work if you have to undervolt is to set a specific clock speed. So knowing how much voltage this chip needs, I locked it to 4.0 gigahertz at 1.15 volts and that did make things a bit more manageable here without giving up stock performance since at stock settings it will only boost up to this level of all core clock anyway and here you can see these temps are looking a lot better and though i won't be using this system for red dead 2 it was running okay in 1440p with medium settings and it was still hitting 85 90 fps but uh, i personally prefer a little bit higher visual quality with this title. But with that undervolt, temps are much, much better and I think absolutely doable in the long run. Now the GPU fans are running a bit fast and louder here at 75%. So what I'll do later on is I'll dial them down and then I'll undervolt the card a little bit and just let it run a bit hotter. And I don't foresee a huge impact here on GPU performance. Still though, with the solid panels, I'm thinking it will be a better idea to revisit the passive Shadow Rock LP because that's what I had in mind when I first got this case a while back. Or even the L9A might be a better choice since that gives more breathing room. But I am also keen to check out something like the CryoRig C7 since I haven't tried that in this case yet. But yeah, on the GPU side, it's actually very good. The performance to power ratio is fantastic with this card and I think that level of power it's pretty beneficial for a sub 10 liter build. The RX 580 and 5700 cards would run in the 80 plus range in this case, along with higher fan speeds. So yeah, this is absolutely an upgrade to both the performance side of the house, but more so in the efficiency arena. And I am absolutely loving the 6600 XT and can't wait to get my Nitro Plus card in this build. In fact, I'm probably gonna do that as soon as I finish this video. So the Slyker SM550 is a fun little case and I think if you're looking for a sub 10 liter platform to play around with, this one's an excellent choice. And as this one gets updated, I'll be sure to let y'all know how it's doing. Thanks for checking in today. The build components I'll leave down below. Please like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.